the warmest and heartiest welcome to everyone from home to home, stitched together, united in this service. Coming from the Matawan United Methodist Church as we celebrate Christmas Eve 2020. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. We have received in faith that which you, O Lord, have promised. Emmanuel, God with us, God in us, revealed to us. Our souls rejoice in the salvation of the Lord. The Lord will be our everlasting light and glory. Praise and glory be to you, now and forevermore.
God of glory, your splendor shines from a manger in Bethlehem, where the light of the world is humbly born into the darkness of human night. Open our eyes to Christ's presence in the shadows of our world, so that we, like him, may become beacons of your justice and defenders of all for whom there is no room. Amen. Lord God, as we make our way to Bethlehem, walking with Mary and Joseph, walking alongside the donkey, we open our hearts and confess that we've not always followed the way with Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, but we've gone our own ways, our own thoughts, our own feelings. Forgive us, Lord, and help us to Enter into the beauty and the power of this precious night. In your holy name we pray. Amen. And now let's turn to one another and offer signs of gracious peace, extending with our hearts to all those gathered as we share in this worship together. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 55, verses 6 to 13. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon God while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way, and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for God will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be to the Lord for a memorial, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. A reading of chapter 2 of the letter of Paul to Titus, verses 11 to 14. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope 
and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. Amen. Christmas from the Waltzes. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Blessing to all. Merry Christmas from the Varelis family. We hope everyone has a wonderful day and we hope that our new year is full of peace and love and many blessings and a better 2021. Take care everyone. Take care. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Merry Christmas. Love hope. And Heather. Hi, this is Carrie Thurman, and I'd like to wish everyone at MUMC, near and far, a very Merry Christmas and a happy and healthy New Year. Hi, this is Shelly Cruz Minutello, and this is my father, Ernesto Cruz, and we just want to say Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from our family to yours. Feliz Navidad y Prospero Año Nuevo. Season's greetings from the Chelebi family. I'm Tara, wishing you all a Merry Christmas. And I'm Marilyn. Peace, love, and joy to you and your families. Happy birthday, Jesus. Good morning, church family. We wanted to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a safe one and a healthy 2021 from our family to yours. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Kathy Beam, I wish you a Christmas filled with love and laughter and a new year of good health and blessings beyond measure. Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your king good tidings for christmas and a happy new year we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas and a happy
all around the world, this is Christmas. All around the world, different faiths, different traditions. This is Christmas. It was set up to be December 25th to connect with the ancient Romo festival of the Dies Natalis, the, the birth of the day. At the calendar at that time, that's when I thought the solstice took place. So we birth Jesus in the midst of what's happening in the earth in the north. It's curious, you notice that uh, John the Baptist, six months, we celebrate his day in June, when the days get shorter. He must decrease, I must decrease, and Jesus, in the western, in the northern hemisphere, must increase. He must increase, I must decrease. So as you watch the days getting longer, slowly, then gradually more rapidly as March comes. Let's just know that every day the light is coming into the world. So the Christmas gospel is a continuation of the narrative in Luke, the second chapter, verses 1 to 20. Again, we're with Mary, this time with Joseph, this time with the child. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the province of Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and singing, Glory to God in the highest heavens, and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angel had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, just as it had been told them. My brothers, my sisters, this is the gospel of our Lord. And all God's people said, Amen. One of my favorite Christmas cards over the years was a humorous one. It was Rudolph lying on the couch 
of a therapist. And Rudolph was saying, people laugh and call me names. And the therapist said, how do you feel about that? How do you feel? An ancient philosopher by the name of Epictetus claimed that the only things that really belong to us are our thoughts and our feelings. Not sure I would fully agree with that in this sense. In the spiritual world, we are subject to intrusive thoughts and feelings from about, from outside. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we have to take them captive, as Paul says, hold them up, up against the wall, as it were, until they are obedient to the thoughts that Christ has. In Isaiah 55, we hear the prophet saying about God, God speaking, my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so are my thoughts from your thoughts and my ways from your ways. <clears throat> so as we look at this powerful story, once again we want to turn into one of the places of focus, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the places of focus is the manger. Manger. A place where animals feed. I suppose that St. Luke wants us to look a little bit deeper into that. Jesus was to be our food. Mangia, mangia, as they say in Italian. Eat. And the wood of the manger <clears throat> at the beginning would also turn into the wood of the cross at the end. So this story, it's laden with St. Francis of Assisi in the 12th century. He embellished it, and we have all of the crashed scenes and the animals and things. And they're there in Luke, but Luke has another kind of design. Luke's idea was there was no room for them in the inn because Jesus did not come as a traveler like we do or hopefully we'll be able to do when the pandemic is over. To travel, stay in a motel, then we move on. There's no moving on for Jesus. He came to stay. But another image came to me about the manger, and the title of this sermon is The Manger and the Fuse Box. What does a fuse box have to do with a manger? Let's take a look at electricity. Powerful, high-tension wires bring it, and then they get transformed down so that they go to our house. And then from our house, they go to a fuse box so that the electricity can be distributed to various appliances and outlets so that we can operate electricity. The manger was like a fuse box. The manger was the place where all the transcendent, big concepts of God would be transformed <coughs> pardon me, into a tiny, tiny manger to be then distributed out. Sometimes the wires get crossed. When wires get crossed, there's a short circuit. We blow a fuse. I wonder if at times, when our thoughts and feelings get confused, they can trip us up. That the energy of God gets forced up against other thoughts and feelings that come from our past, 
from the news, from all kinds of things, and thoughts and feelings are rather temporary. If you don't like your thoughts and feelings, stick around a while. They will change like the clouds in the sky. They're fluid. They're yours. But we need to be able to experience the thoughts of God. So how do we bridge the gap so that the thoughts of God, which are so different from that Isaiah 55 passage, the thoughts of God are so different from ours? Let's just take that as a, as a pause to take that phrase because we want to have the mind of Jesus. We want to have our thoughts to be in synchronicity with the thoughts of God. We want to be able to hear in our own lives what the angel said to Mary and to the shepherds. The angels in both cases said, do not be afraid. Now, that's used in the Bible as an indication that God's about to do something. God's about to speak. But it's like, fasten your safety belts, do not be afraid. It's okay that you're afraid, but do not let the fear run away with you so that it, it holds your courage captive. Don't let that happen. Let the courage and the hardiness of God's word speak to you in such a way that it pushes aside fear so that you can hear the angelic, divine, spirit-laden words of God coming to us. So we notice that in that beautiful passage in its different segments, we want to look at Jesus, Mary, Joseph, the shepherds, get in touch with their feelings. They're very godly. So another good example of what to do this Christmas time and Christmas week is to snuggle up to the creche that you may have in your house or in your imagination kneel before the Christ child and wait for the words that will come, maybe in writing, the words that will come that are introduced by, do not be afraid. As Joseph was encouraged, don't be afraid to take the child, because the child is of the Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid to go share the good news as these shepherds were, the first missionaries, a ruffian crowd, shepherds. They weren't particularly emulated or praised. They were the ruffians in the world. And it's to them that the word came to be the first missionaries. At the end of the passage, Mary says, or Luke says, Mary pondered all these things in her heart. She looked back to the Annunciation. She looked again to the visitation. She saw these ruffians, shepherds come with their faces ablaze with joy. And she pondered all these things in her heart. It's good for us to ponder Wait to let the Spirit interpret for us what it is that's going on in your life, in our public life, in your private life, your family life. Wait so that the Spirit can tell you what it means, so that the initial thoughts and feelings, they might not be of God. They might just be thoughts and feelings. Don't let your life be pushed and shoved by thoughts and feelings. They're good. They need to be respected. They need to be watched. They need to be stepped back from them so that soul part of you watches what's going on like you would a clouds across the sky. Let them move so that deeper thoughts and feelings that are godly 
can come up with you because the same Holy Spirit that inspired Mary, that inspired Joseph, that inspired the angels, and when we celebrate Epiphany, that inspired the wise men from way, way far east to check out that star, to let the thoughts and the feelings of God to come into your heart. Dear God, I pray that this Christmas time, this special service, will indeed bless us, would fill us with supernatural joy. Give us courage, Lord, during these difficult times. Do not let our lives be informed by discouragement, but rather uplifted by hope as we ponder all the things that you are doing and will continue to do in our lives. And we make this prayer in your holy name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we dedicate a time of special prayer. And we call upon your mercy and your grace and your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we lift up our earth with its needs, our environment, our surroundings, this pandemic, our government and all its issues, our church family, our friends, our loved ones, and all our needs. We remind you, O oh God, merciful Father, of all those for whom we have been praying week after week for your mercy and healing grace upon them. We pray your protection upon all of us. And may your glory shine within us this coming year. We love you, Lord, and we praise your holy name. And we ask that you intercede for every family who's listening. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Son, in whose holy name we pray the prayer that he taught us. As we say, Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Christ was born.
Christ was born. 